What up you nerds, Fallout here, and Halo Infinite Multiplayer is here. Kinda dropped out of the blue, and I really couldn't be happier. There's a lot to take in, especially if you either didn't play the beta or if you've never played Halo before. Whether you're a newcomer or a vet, take today's video as a refresher course. I'm gonna go over every weapon in Halo Infinite in a PvP setting so you have a better idea of what they do and how they perform. But before we get going, do me a favor, would you? Scroll down four inches and tap that like button real quick, and subscribe to the channel if you're a newcomer. Big welcome to those who do. All right, the weapons in Halo Infinite. We're gonna go in alphabetical order because why not? First up, the Cadillac of Halo weapons, the OG, the BR-75, AKA the Battle Rifle. If you're new, you're gonna wanna get familiar with the BR because it's one of your go-to weapons in PVP. Very straightforward, very reliable at both close and long range. The BR is a burst weapon. If you're a Destiny player, think Pulse Rifle. Every trigger squeeze is three bullets out of the chamber and it fires in semi-auto with a 36 size mag. If you're dead on accurate, it'll take four bursts overall to lock up a kill. Remember that a four burst kill does not mean every shot has to be in the head. Work smarter, not harder, boys. If you get three full body shots, then deliver the final blow to the head, you'll still lock up a four shot kill with the BR. That's kind of going to be a running theme with a lot of the weapons you're able to pick up in Halo Infinite, so keep that in the back of your mind. If you're a complete no thumb jabroni, hey, don't worry about it. You can still lock up a kill in multiplayer with a seven burst to the body overall, or a two full body shot and one melee combo if you're up close. Again, the battle rifle is cracked and a jack of all trades weapon. Learn to use it and sleep with it under your pillow. Next is the cinder shot grenade launcher. Semi-automatic, it fires a little grenade shot that will actually bounce off floors and walls one time before detonating. If you ADS the weapon, you'll notice the trajectory while a tad wonky and wiggly will still go in a fairly straight line. The shot will go where you aim it, but remember that you still have to account for the nade bouncing before ultimate detonation. If you hip fire the weapon, you'll notice there's much more of an arc on your weapon every time you fire. TLDR hip fire equals weak and limp, and ADS equals little blue pill. Another thing to take note of, you actually don't have to be incredibly accurate with the cinder shot. Reason being is that when a grenade blows up near a target, it'll actually create a suction effect, like a tiny black hole. You literally pull people towards the explosion. Two shots directly to an enemy or near enough to an enemy will kill, but remember that with the suction effect, you can probably fire off one, swap to a different weapon, then finish with regular gunfire while they get tagged by the explosion. Next, we have the CQS-48 Bulldog, which I'm just going to shorten to the Bulldog. Bulldog is a shotgun, and naturally it does well if you're close to mid-range. If you're a Halo vet from the very beginning of the franchise like yours truly, well, first of all, it's probably past your bedtime, no matter where you are, but also you're going to notice the Bulldog is really, really weak compared to other Halo shotguns. If the Combat Evolved shotgun ever met the Bulldog, it would take its lunch money and shove it into a locker for fun. Even if you are close enough to an enemy to smell their breath, the bulldog is not going to be able to lock up a one-shot kill. You will be able to get a kill if you one-shot from up close, then follow up with a melee. If you're within 10 meters, give or take, you'll be able to two-tap with the bulldog, provided you're accurate, but any further than that, it's going to take three. I know that's kind of a big bummer, but the good news is that bulldog comes with full auto fire mode and a seven-shot mag. Just hold that trigger down and keep it steady. Next weapon is the Disruptor, which looks kind of like a weird little electric taser. The Disruptor is very weird. It fires tiny electric prongs that stick into your target, and they deal damage over time? Kind of. The more prongs you stick into a target, the more devastating the electric damage will be. When shooting my buddy in a private lobby, love you bro, we found out that one or two prongs from the Disruptor will do next to no damage at all. The magic number you gotta hit is three, with a minimum of three prongs stuck into an enemy. You're just gonna absolutely ravage their shield and continue to do a little bit of electric chip damage for a bit. If you're in a game of PvP, you could fire off three disruptor prongs, then safely swap to something like the sidekick and finish them off by shooting them in the head. If your enemy is a complete twice-baked potato and isn't putting up much of a fight, remember that six shots in an enemy will result in death. Their shield will get dominated and they'll eventually bleed out due to electric damage over time. Disruptor has a wonky learning curve, but the gun can fire in full auto and it's one I'm looking forward to learning more. Moving on, we got the old old slice and dice. The old big blue, I'ma cut you, the energy sword. Energy sword is pretty straightforward. Even though it might be weird to think about, your sword does have an ammo meter. Every time you land a blow, you will chip away at your ammo charge. Each hit on an enemy will deplete about 14% out of your overall ammo, so keep your eye on the ammo and make sure you don't end up running around with an empty stub. If you're a newbie, when you're close enough to an enemy that your sword crosshair goes red, hit the trigger like you would fire a gun, and you will fly towards the enemy in the blink of an 
die with a one hit melee kill. Very effective up close. And remember, the Bulldog shotgun cannot acquire a one hit kill even at point blank. So outside of heavy team fire, backpedaling and the occasional gravity hammer, the sword is looking like a really strong close range weapon option in Halo Infinite. Final note, if you're in a 1v1 sword duel for some reason, and you and your enemy swing at the same time, you will clash off of each other and deal reduced damage. Next, a very fun community favorite, the Grav Hammer. Here's how the Grav Hammer is different than a sword. The Grav Hammer also has an ammo bar, but whereas the sword only takes away ammo on a hit, the Grav Hammer will take away ammo every time you bring it down, about 10% each time. That means at full power, you'll only have 10 swings total, which is actually more than you might think, but still, make them count. If you're very close to an enemy when bringing down the hammer, it'll result in an easy one-hit kill, but you gotta be closer with the hammer than you gotta be with the sword. If you're outside of one-hit kill range with the hammer, you're still gonna do big splash damage to a target and shove them back fairly hard. There will probably be a few situations where you drop the hammer in PvP to get someone off of you, then swap to a gun like the battle rifle to pew-pew them in the head as they get knocked away from you. Also fun for beating up vehicles that might be trying to run you over in big team battle, but that might be a video for another day. Okay, next up, the Heat Wave. Heat Wave is a really weird gun, and I'm not sure how to describe it other than it shoots weird waves of energy out in front of you that can ricochet off of floors and walls. If you're a Destiny player like me, think of a fusion rifle with no charge time, but the projectiles are way slower and it's overall weaker. The Heat Wave has two different firing modes and doesn't have the ability to ADS at all. Hitting the ADS button will swap you back and forth between both firing modes. The modes are horizontal and vertical. That's really all there is to it. Each shot will fire out exactly six bolts of energy, and the reticle for both horizontal and vertical will show you exactly where each bolt will go. While it's easier to land shots by firing horizontally, you'll find it's much, much harder to lock up a kill in PvP. Vertical is usually the way to go. It's harder to land shots because you gotta aim it and time the shot just right, but when you connect with vertical, you'll hit much harder because you're likely gonna land more bolts overall. You're gonna need to land 12 bolts on an enemy to lock up a kill, meaning you can get a two tap with heat wave, but you gotta land every bolt two times. Even if you only wanna land one shot, the heat wave will eat through an enemy shield faster than I'll eat through a goddamn bag of black forest gummy bears. You fire off one shot, swap to a different weapon like the battle rifle, then clean up the enemy, no problem. Next weapon, the Hydra, which is really weird, but also very fun. Hydra is a multi-shot rocket launcher, but the rockets are very, very weak. You've got a six shot mag by default, but it takes literally three direct rocket shots in order to kill another player. The weird thing is that the gun doesn't have the ability to ADS. You'll instead change to a secondary fire mode, where if you hover over an enemy player for about a full second, you're going to be able to lock onto that player with your Hydra. Fired shots will then track towards your target, but I gotta tell you, if you're going to take advantage of the tracking rockets, you're going to need a little bit of range to make them effective. At close to mid-range, they still travel fairly quick, and you can overshoot your target if you're kind of too close. I feel like the Hydra will definitely be a good play on bigger maps and in big team battle. If it is a regular weapon drop in 4v4, you can definitely still make it work, but I would probably rely on straight shot mode rather than lock on mode. Next up, we got the M41 Spanker, aka the Rocket Launcher. Some things never change, and I'm totally fine with that. If you're familiar with ye olden halos of days gone by, you're gonna be happy to know that the Rocket Launcher feels near identical to how it performed in almost every other halo. You pull the trigger, you fire one rocket, quick travel time, and a big boom. If you're a new player, the play is to jump and aim for your enemy's feet or a nearby wall. The overall splash damage on the Spanker is enormous and it'll lock up the kill for you nine times out of 10. I know in some old Halo games, I think Halo 2, the rocket launcher had the ability to lock onto vehicles it can't do that anymore. Shame, but still a top tier weapon overall. Next, we got the MA-40 AR, AKA the Assault Rifle. Gotta tell you, in old Halo games, the Assault Rifle used to be a noob trap weapon, especially in Halos 1 through 3. Newer players would stick to the AR because they didn't want to quite learn how to land headshots, and any talented PvP player with a pistol in Halo 1 or a BR in Halo 2 or 3 would absolutely smoke any AR user. Now, things are a little bit different. The AR is actually kind of shockingly good. It has very tight fire and can be kind of sort of zoomed in a little bit. It's got a good time to kill overall and will kill in 20 body shots. Sounds like a lot, but happens very quick. If you start shooting the body and then aim up a little bit at neck level, headshots with the AR do count. You can get a kill in as little as 15 shots if you break an enemy shield and then get a bullet to go into the head. That's really all I can say about the AR. I'm much more of a fan of the battle rifle spawn in Halo multiplayer. I like the pacing and the accuracy required of the battle rifle, but don't sleep on the 
AR. It's probably better than it's ever been in a past Halo game, and if you're taken off guard by it up close, you're probably gonna be dead. The Mangler is a brand new gun, which kind of reminds me of the Mauler from Halo 3. However, the Mauler was a handheld spread shotgun, whereas the Mangler is kind of a handheld slug shotgun. It only fires one round every time you pull the trigger, and I'm pretty sure it's actually a projectile weapon, not a hitscan weapon. Granted, that projectile does travel really quickly, way faster than a rocket, but still, feels projectile. I'm gonna have to practice my ass off with the Mangler because it was feeling weird to me overall, and it seemed very not forgiving. You need four body shots to lock up a kill, or if you're accurate, you could get two body shots followed by one headshot to lock up a quicker kill. Mangler is semi-auto and does have projectile drop-off, but you gotta be really, really far from your enemy before the drop-off kicks in. Try to use it at close to mid-range for sure, and if you're really not feeling confident, Try to land two shots before swapping to another weapon to finish up the kill. Next, we got the MK50 Sidekick. If Halo Combat Evolved could only know what the pistol would eventually devolve into over time, it would be spinning in its goddamned grave. All things considered though, the sidekick ain't that bad compared to other Halo pistols. It's got a 12 shot mag, fires semi-auto, and requires seven bullets to kill overall. You can either go seven straight to the head if you're cracked or six body shots followed by a seventh and final shot right to the dome. If you're not accurate, it's gonna be about 10 body shots to kill, which can be very painful if you already have a low mag count in a fight or if you miss a few shots. Sidekick is reliable and damned good if you're accurate. I usually try to time my shots if my target is really far away, but if they're mid to mid close range, I just spam shots a lot because you're more likely to connect if they're up close. TLDR for me, sidekick is fine, but I will always replace it with a battle rifle if I can. Next, the old pink mist, the needler. The halo needler always ranks somewhere on the scale of good to complete meme. I'm not sure where it is right now in infinite, might be too early to tell, but I'm leaning a little bit closer to meme. If you're unfamiliar, the Needler is a full auto projectile weapon with shots that track an enemy. If you manage to stick a target with 12 or more needles, they will explode in a glorious puff of cotton candy looking death. Tracking on the Needler is really only good up close. If you get too far away, it's not really going to work as well and you need those needles to connect. The Needler kind of has wild handling. It doesn't feel incredibly good, but hey, when does it? If you manage to catch an enemy off guard and out in the open with the Needler in PvP, they're pretty much dead, which is actually fairly doable considering the radar in Halo Infinite is a measly 18 meters, I think maybe the shortest it's ever been. In short, if you want to meme on people, the answer is always the Needler. Next up, the Plasma Pistol. If you're new to Halo, the Plasma Pistol is a weapon that has a very specific job, eating enemy shields. The Plasma Pistol does terribly low damage to the body. You will almost never get a kill directly via shooting an enemy's flesh with the Plasma pistol. Instead, you do the following. Hold the trigger down and charge up the pistol. You can hold this charge for as long as you have ammo, but keep in mind, holding that charge will rapidly eat your ammo over time. When you find a target, release the shot. It'll home in on your enemy and 100% remove their shields on contact, even if they have an overshield. Then you swap to whatever other weapon you have that's accurate, battle rifle, sidekick, commando, and you tap them right in the head for a quick, clean kill. Veteran players ain't nothing new to see here. The plasma Plasma Pistol is great at shield destruction and the tracking will be on point from shockingly far away. As always, make sure to play near cover and peek shoot if you know an enemy is hunting you with a Plasma Pistol. By the way, in a couple of the old Halo games, if you tagged a vehicle with an overcharged Plasma Pistol, it would act like an EMP and shut down the vehicle for a little bit. That doesn't work anymore. GG, no re. Next up, the Pulse Carbine. I originally did not like this gun during the Alpha PvP gameplay, but I've come to like it more now that I actually know how it works. The carbine is a projectile version of the battle rifle. Pull the trigger and you'll burst fire four little shots of energy that have tracking to a nearby target. The carbine will hurt bad when it connects. I was shocked to learn that with only one trigger pull, you can almost completely nom down an enemy shield. And with two trigger pulls, you can flat out kill a person if every shot connects. The only downside is that unlike the hitscan battle rifle, it's much easier to strafe and dodge shots from somebody shooting you with a carbine. However, if you got a clear line of sight, I've been doing the following. You shoot one or even two shots, depending on if the enemy knows you're there or not, and you swap to a different weapon like the sidekick or whatever for an easy headshot cleanup. Even if you land just one burst from the carbine, their shields are almost now all gone and you can put them in the ground with a headshot from a different weapon. Like other Covenant weapons, the carbine has no mag. You can fire it repeatedly, but if you fire it too much without giving it a breather, 
sure it'll briefly overheat. Next, the Ravager, a burst fire weapon. Ravager fires kind of like a plasma grenade launcher. One trigger pull will fire a few shots at once and you'll need to land three direct shots in order to get a kill. I was sad to find out that the Ravager has really bad splash damage. Shooting near an enemy's feet will do piss poor damage overall. Ravager has an alternate fire mode though. Hold the trigger down to charge up your shot, then release a big blast that'll cover the floor in fire. Any enemy caught in that blast or standing in the fire is going to take a lot of damage. IMO, the alternate fire mode, totally the way to go. Or if an enemy runs up to you out of nowhere, you can also land one regular shot and a melee combo to get a quick kill. Quick tidbit there, apparently any weapon in infinite that has a blade on the gun deals a little bit more melee damage. Tested that in a private lobby, it is true. Same deal for the skewer, a gun that we'll cover later. Moving on, the S7 sniper or just the sniper rifle. Very familiar territory here. The sniper is tried and true and uncomplicated. Four shots in the mag, one shot will break shields and another body shot will kill. Or if you're accurate, a dome shot will kill immediately, even with full shields. Remember that if you're a Destiny player like me, Halo is built different. Even when jumping with the sniper rifle, there's no crazy in-air accuracy penalty. People can and will hip fire no scope at you up close and they can embarrass you and put you in a low effort YouTube montage, you've been warned. Next, the Sentinel Beam. The beam is really fun and shockingly powerful. There's no overheating. You can actually hold the trigger down and drain the entire mag the whole way through without worry. The beam also has very good time to kill. It'll eat through shield and flesh very quickly. The only real problem you're going to have is getting a handle on the recoil. Doesn't matter if you're on M&K or controller. The beam has really strong kick that requires a little bit of practice to pin down. Go out, give it a bit of practice if you can because it'll pay off later for sure. The shock rifle is kind of like the sniper rifle but with one weird twist. Like the sniper, a direct shot in the head will result in a one hit kill. Unlike the sniper though, you're going to need three body shots with the shock rifle to lock up a kill. Kind of a bummer, but the shock rifle has a nice trick. It can deal chain lightning damage if you shoot one person and there's other people near the target. The chain damage won't be as strong as a direct shot, but it's still really funny and a great way to punish people who might be standing too close to each other. You can also deal that chain lightning damage by shooting weapons that might be laying around on the floor. The more you know. Next, we have the skewer, aka the most satisfying kill you will ever get in Halo Infinite multiplayer. The skewer is its just a gigantic harpoon gun that fires a quick moving projectile. Even if you hit another guy in the toe, any contact with the harpoon will result in an immediate one hit kill. Sounds great, but you got to remember that the harpoon is projectile, not hit scan, meaning that sometimes you'll need to lead your shot a little bit before pulling the trigger. Even though the skewer seems like it would be a golden vehicle killer, you actually need two shots by default to blow up a warthog, which to me seems like a gigantic crock of sh but what are you gonna do? One shot mag too, so if you're trying to use it up close, the safe play would be to probably fire off a shot then immediately change weapons no matter what. That way, if you miss, you'll at least have a backup option rather than a painfully long reload. Next, the Stalker Rifle. I really like this gun. It's like a sniper rifle and a battle rifle had a baby together and I get to cause chaos with it. The Stalker is a rifle that hits hard and has good range. If you're inaccurate, five shots total to the body will get you a kill, but you can also lock up a much easier kill with two to the body and one final Final shot to the head. There's no magazine on the stalker rifle. You can fire it indefinitely without reloading, but if you fire it too much with no chill, it'll eventually overheat after about seven shots fired. You're only going to lose about three or four percent energy per shot with the stalker rifle, so it's fairly generous on ammo overall. Like the sniper rifle and the skewer, the stalker has two different scopes, a medium and long range version. Great for range. Can't wait to use it more in PvP. Finally, we have the VK78 Commando or just the Commando. The Commando is a hybrid between the battle rifle and the AR. It's a precision weapon, kind of, but it also has blindingly quick full auto and can be a little difficult to control at long range. The reticle is going to bloom out hard on you in full auto mode, so be sure to keep that in mind. If you're inaccurate, the Commando will take lucky 13 shots to the body to lock up a kill, but you can get a quick kill with just seven to the body and one final shot to the head. Commando definitely seems cracked at mid range. I for sure prefer the battle rifle, but if nothing else is around, 
I'll definitely go Commando. Just gotta work a little harder at controlling that recoil. And there you go, every weapon in Halo Infinite completely explained. Hope y'all learned a thing or two. If you're really diving in deep with Halo and have any extra tips and or tricks on how to use these weapons as efficiently as you can, feel free to let me know down in the comment section. Please like today's video, it helps me out a ton, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I look forward to streaming Halo Infinite more while we all wait for the Witch Queen, and I hope you join me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.